In a sea of polymer frame striker fired pistols, the Beretta APX and APX A1 has slowly started to set itself apart from everybody else. And that's one of the things that has really excited me about these two pistols. I've now put 500 rounds through the Beretta APX A1 and I've done a couple of different things to spruce it up just a little bit. But before I get into the video, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. What are your favorite things to do to your concealed carry or home defense pistols? Sound off in the comment section down below. And with that being said, let's get into the video. Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to again talk about the Beretta APX A1 and why I really, really do like this pistol. Now I've got 500 rounds through it so far and I just wanted to provide you guys a little bit of an update on a couple of different things that I've done with it and let you guys have at it from there. But before we get into that, I need to take a second to say a special thank you to Gunzone Deals. They are somewhat sponsoring this video, and that is because they went ahead and sent me this right here. This is the Burris Fastfire 3, and that is one of the things that we're going to be talking about through the majority of this video. So with that being said, let's talk about it. 500 rounds later, I have really, really enjoyed the Beretta APX A1, or what I will say, the A1. Very much like its predecessor, the original APX, which was a MHS M17 or M17 MHS submission for that program. We all know that the P321, for whatever right, wrong reasons, it doesn't matter, the P320 did end up winning. However, I've always felt that the Beretta APX had a couple of things going for it that um, I think the civilian market really, really did like. In addition to that, it has flown underneath the radar for a lot of people coming in right around that $350 mark. Well, now introducing the Beretta APX A1 with a lot of really great features that kind of sets itself apart its predecessor, but also a number of the other polymer frame striker fired pistols out there. If you haven't seen my video on the A1, I'll have a card at the end for both the original and this one on my first looks, and you guys can check that out. But with that being said, one of the biggest features that Beretta did was they've set it up to accept a red dot. And you can actually end up finding a lot of great deals out on the interwebs right now with a red dot and light included for under $500. And that is something that really excites me about this pistol. Not only is it from one of the most renowned and historic manufacturers out on the market today, but you can get it set up just like this or very similar to this for that sub $500 mark or maybe even just right at $500. And I think that is a great deal. If you guys are interested in any of that, swing on by fitandfire.com, go to the products and videos uh, or videos and products tab and I'll have links to all of that um, and I will have a link to where you need to go down in the pinned comment as well. So let's get into it. The Burris Fastfire 3 is a red dot that I have not had much experience with. Um, in fact, I've had zero experience with it, but I will say that for a decent red dot, it is checking a lot of the blocks. It does mount to the pistol exactly how you would expect, even though it does have the doctor footprint, which is not one that I prefer. Most of all of my red dots are the Trigicon RMR style setup, but this one has the doctor. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. If you know that this is the red dot that you want, uh, then that's fine. It will just, just be on there for good <laughs> until you decide to change out everything. One of the other things that I wanted to do was also talk about the plate situation for the Breda APX A1. In my previous video, I said that it was about 50 bucks for you to get a RMR footprint plate. Um, and uh, that is true, but not so true as well. Uh, that was for the RMR setup. For the doctor footprint, this cost me 30 bucks. I did pay for it myself and had it sent to me. Um, and I actually even had a 10% discount code for that as well when I registered the A1 with Beretta. So 
coming in $27 with that discount uh, for the plate, which is just fine. Now, once I was able to get the plate mounted, the red dot mounted directly to the plate into the slide itself. A lot of the different types of plates will have the, the, the plate, see how many times I can actually say that, but it will mount directly to the slide and then the red dot will mount to the plate. And that's not how this one is set up. It directly screws down through the plate into the slide and that's something I really, really did like. Got a couple hundred rounds through this with the red dot on there and I've been actually pretty impressed. The dot is fairly crisp. Uh, I have no complaints about that there. Uh, I've had no issues with the A1 on failures to feed, fire, or eject, so it has been 100% reliable, and that's something I really do like. As you can see, uh, it does not co-witness with this red dot on the iron sights, and that's really okay, because there aren't too many red dots out on the market today that will, and if there are, they're extremely hard to get, such as the EPS, EPS Carry, and the SCS from Hollow Sun. Those are extremely hard to find right now. But if you can get those, I'd recommend jumping on those if you can. The controls on this is relatively elementary. It is one button on the side that controls five different functions, and that is going to be an ambient setting, so the dot will increase its brightness or dimness based off of the ambient light around you. It has a high, medium, and low setting, and then an off setting as well. So uh, no shake awake uh, technology on this, which is not really that big of a deal because you're still getting uh, you know, tens of thousands of hours through this uh, 1632 battery. So that's something that's pretty nice. It does have a top loading battery. So that is another bonus. You don't have to worry about taking the red dot off to change out the battery. And then on the back side here, it has this little index mark, which is something I really do like because if you do swap out your uh, iron sights, it gives you a index mark for you to realign your rear sight. And as you draw, it gives you one more point of reference to get your uh, windage correct as you're presenting towards the target. And that's something I really did like as well as you're transitioning from focusing on the target to finding that red dot. That is something that I've really right, liked about this particular setup. And realistically, this is a bit of a budget red dot as well. These are coming in somewhere around that $125 to $150, depending on when and where you buy it. Could be more, could be less. It all just depends on, like I say, where you buy it and when you buy it. As we have seen, prices did skyrocket because of the uh, pandemic situation that happened over the last few years, and then inflation has been an issue as well. So. Prices may be up, prices may be down, but just, just keep in mind it's about $125 to $150. Uh, there are others that are cheaper than this, but I, I do feel that if you're able to get one of these with the pistol already set up, like you can on the links that I've provided over at fitandfire.com, then um, you're not going to really lose out on anything. And I think this is going to do very, very well for you. Now let's talk about the accuracy, and that's one of the most important aspects of adding a red dot to a pistol, at least for me. I'm almost 45 years old, my eyes are starting to fade, I've had LASIK surgery, but that was over 20 years ago, and I can tell that my eyes are slowly starting to become a slight bit of an issue. I still have 20-20 vision, but I am also seeing that my ability to focus on something very far away and then very close up has started to uh, lengthen that period of time. As a young man, looking at something, I could focus on it, no problem, and then when I'd look at something real close, it was instant. But as I've gotten older, I've noticed that time frame lengthening from me being able to focus on something far away to something close. So having a red dot, you just you know keep your eyes focused on the target, find that red dot, and put the red dot on the target itself, and let your round go. And I've found that with a red dot, I have become more and more accurate the longer that I've been using them. So with all of that being said, I did put five rounds on target um, at 25 yards, and I was reasonably impressed with it. The group covered about 
the size of my fist at 25 yards shooting freehand, I did throw one round. I have to admit that to you guys. Out of the five rounds that I shot, one of those rounds did get thrown. And um, I'm actually kind of embarrassed about that, but I wanted to make sure that you guys saw what I was able to do at um, 25 yards. Now, I've got a lot of flack in the past talking about me zeroing a red dot at 25 yards freehand uh, or offhand rather. And um, that's usually how I do things, but for this particular purpose, I did go ahead and place the pistol on a rest and went ahead and zeroed it at 25 yards. I was able to put all five rounds into about an inch and a half square. I didn't get footage of that, but I did get all of that uh, squared away before I did my standing offhand shooting for you guys on the accuracy. So with all of that being said, that's very long-winded, but I have been impressed with not only the Beretta APXA1, but also with the Burris Fastfire 3 as well. So 500 rounds later, I have really, really enjoyed this pistol, and I really encourage you guys to check out either the Beretta APX or the Beretta APXA1, because let me tell you, I have been extremely excited about it for a very long time and uh, it floats underneath the radar, like I said, of a lot of people and it really shouldn't. So you guys should swing on by and check out uh, the deals that I've got uh, on fitandfire.com or just check out gunzonedeals.com. So that would be cool as well. That's really going to wrap it up for this particular video. I sure do appreciate you guys swinging by. Don't forget Fit and Fire newsletter is out there for you guys to uh, go ahead and jump on. I will admit that I've been a little behind on everything with my newsletter because I've been taking care of some family who has been sick. So um, I am running behind, but I've got a big plan for the new year. So stay tuned for that and we will catch you guys later. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye y'all.